Hello everybody and welcome to the MRN presentation on providing integrated solutions to treating clinical trial patients in the community. We're going to start by talking about the complexities of decentralised clinical trials, then look at the implications of DCT for pharmaceutical companies and for sites, then we're going to talk a little bit about the value proposition and ultimately there are some takeaways at the end. The premise of this talk is that the introduction of patient-centric practices, in this case conducting elements of a clinical trial in a patient's own home, is a great idea. It has value. To the patient, of course, but through them, the site, and to the pharmaceutical sponsors, creating a win all around. But like anything else of value, it takes effort, it's complex, and it's unfamiliar. Here we're going to explore how MRN can make the complex manageable, to get the maximum benefit for all the stakeholders. There are many detailed elements that need to be integrated to enable clinical trials to take place. Traditionally, they are all funneled through the site and have no impact on the patient. This is a site-centric model designed for the efficient use of healthcare resources through centralization. Any one of these service providers can just send their stuff to the patient. But the trial in a box concept is, in the vast majority of cases, just too difficult for the patient to do on their own. The older technology around ePro demonstrates that supporting tech in the hands of the patients is complex, and this is just one piece of a much broader picture. Each provider may have a service, but if they all rely on the patient, then the implementation is fraught and subject to significant risk of failure. Sites also struggle to support patients at a distance. They just don't have the infrastructure to do so. This all gives too much work to the patient and doesn't give them what they are looking for, which is to feel cared about and special. Sending a nurse to the patient in their own home is a good way of channeling the whole set of tools into a single service. Nurses, however, also need support and just sending them out from the site leaves them exposed with a lack of training and expertise. This applies not only to their nursing skills, working on your own in a patient's home is quite different from working in a site, but also on a whole set of non-core skills for nurses, such as supporting technology. So in this scenario, patients are happy, but the weak link becomes the nurse. So the best solution is a service provider that can wrap all the DCT tools into a single service to deliver the trial in the community. All the specialised skills can and should reside in the central management team, such as technology support aimed at the nurses and potentially the patients, built to operate in multiple countries needed for the trial. This scenario can keep the nurse supported and happy, as well as the patients, and therefore the site. Now I want to turn to the implications for pharmaceutical companies. Protocol design changes. This includes determining which are the key visits to run at the site, which can be run at the home, and how to capture the data at the time you want in the way you want in the community. Different data elements can be collected in different ways, each with different constraints. Some wearable device data can be continuously streamed with the device just delivered at the start of the trial and picked up at the end. Some sensors may have to be delivered to the patient's home while the nurse is there to ensure they're properly understood, installed, calibrated, etc. Some devices may need emergency visits and maintenance to keep them operational. Some data may need a nurse present while it's collected by the patient. Or it may need to be collected by the nurse in the patient's own home. Or indeed we may need to be collected by the PI in a telemedicine call with the nurse present with the patient. All of that can be managed through a final common pathway service provider like the MRN that operates across all tools and all technology to deliver clinical trial activity in the community. Sites are no longer constrained to recruit only the number of patients they can treat in parallel in their clinic. Recruitment can speed up dramatically. However, finding nurses, supply of technology devices, support of software can all find their way onto the critical path, leading to new challenges for recruitment. 
The financial balance changes as there is less money per patient for the site, so they have to recruit more patients to maintain their revenue. There will be new constraints, perhaps physician time instead of nursing time. The relationship with the site changes. We are now providing a service to the patients that the site may have to adjust to. They may want to do things differently. They may want things that the sponsor is not willing to pay for or doesn't feel is appropriate. Suddenly, patient satisfaction becomes more visible. What if they don't like the trial or the site or the service? This has to be managed as if the patient is a customer, which is a new concept to the site and R&D departments of pharmaceutical companies. Within Pharma, you'll have to be prepared for many of your assumptions to be changed. Things you've relied on for your whole career, benchmarks about the performance of clinical trials, will all be different. You'll have to be prepared to understand how those changes come about. Sites and Pharma actually have to adjust to new processes and new people. There's a new nurse in the mix that they need to trust and rely upon. The data flows differently. The EDC system will be used in a different way. The TMF at the site will need new elements. Pharmacy has to adjust to ensuring that the IMP reaches the patient via the nurse. All the parties in the site have to have more information about the new home dimension that they are not used to. Sites need to be reachable by patients and the MRN nurse when the visit is taking place. 80% of MRN visits occur in the evenings or at the weekends. Tech that links the patient to the site, such as telemedicine as an example, runs the risk of bringing back all those time constraints, dramatically reducing the value of being seen in the home to the patient, as they still have to be seen at a time that is convenient to the site. Sites have to adjust to patients being a more critical stakeholder. Patient centricity is disruptive to their normal patterns. But the value proposition is very strong. More patients have access to IMP. All types of patients, no matter how far away they live, their socio-economic class, their race, gender, sexual orientation, they don't have to put themselves out as much. Less risk of cost, of discrimination, to participate in the study. Seeing patients in their own environment is a true levelling of the playing field. Sites will be motivated by bringing more access to their patients and by reducing the impact of low resources on their ability to deliver the study and their ability to get more patients through the system. Sponsors, of course, will get happy patients, and this typically creates happy sites, not to mention a faster trial with less dropouts. This brings us to the last slide, the takeaways. The most important things to remember from my perspective are that patient-centric services deliver huge value to patients, sites and sponsors. DCT tools enable community-based clinical trial services. These elements of trials are complex and unfamiliar. The services need to wrap up all the complex elements to deliver as simply as possible for the site, the patient and the nurse.